Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the Kodamo Mask, which is a new synthesizer from French manufacturer Kodamo, who are they're quite new to this, a sort of quite a small company. And they originally, I think they launched something after about 2019, which was a sort of Essence FM. It was a multi-voice FM synthesizer. This is more of a commercial release. Um, this is a pure DSP synthesizer. It's got Bitmask synthesizer technology inside it. Uh, this is probably easier for me to show you than it is to explain, but essentially we have a 61 key, nice velocity sensitive key bed with aftertouch, not poly aftertouch, up to, I think the new firmware brings up to 12 voices now. There are two oscillators, a noise source, a digital filter, multi-mode filter, a couple of LFOs, effects, arpeggiator, pitch, a mod matrix, kind of general other parameters. And we can voice, we can layer, we can split. So this is the thing. I mean, you will notice this is the extent of the uh, display and yeah I must admit when I first saw this I thought oh goodness you know do I need a, a tiny parameter window this is essentially five character LCD very little going on there and it is I would have liked to have seen more I'll be honest but actually what I found with this synthesizer was I immediately I, I sort of started off a bit grumpy and then I ended up kind of thinking oh it's actually quite nice I did contact Stefan Damo the originator and designer of this instrument to ask for clarification on this approach and they said and I quote a few reasons they went for this uh, it follows the Zen spirit I wanted to communicate with this instrument instead of being overwhelmed by features you have a small set of carefully curated parameters and buttons you don't need to tweak a lot to get interesting results I would concur with that you don't need to display a lot on screen to do things it's about making best use of the simple things I go on to say it looks nice and clean I love 80s synth, synth aesthetics but I don't like their usability because you often have to input parameter numbers I would agree with that also it was like a challenge to prove that a usable synth can be made using Using a similar interface. Probably the best thing for me to do now is just to show you what Bitmask is. So I've got a display here so I'll just do a quick init patch and then we'll go to oscillator one and we'll set the mask to naught and you'll be able to see up here that'll be the frequency content that'll be the uh, the scope which I've got. So I need to knit it here so the idea with the mask at each of the oscillators if I start with 31 is essentially a sine wave I believe. It's a single sine wave and what they use is bit masking technology, well I'll, I'll attempt to explain it before I show you, which slices the wave into bits and then kind of reorders them and masks them and changes them around. So we end up with, so if we start at naught, we end up with these kind of what look like kind of slightly chip tune type oscillator. without that kind of horrible aliasing in the top end. So you can see they're really sort of, they're sliced and kind of reordered. And we've got 256 of these. And we can go right down and they start to sort of get into almost wave sequence. It's really curious actually, I've not come across this technique before. And essentially to my ears, it sounds like a sort of cross between chip tunes and uh, wavetable because we can scan between them. We don't get the same sort of interpolation that you get with a wavetable, but we get a sort of this unique flavor. Combined with the effects and the modulation, we get some really interesting patches. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I probably should play you some more patches so you get an idea of what sort of stuff we've got, we're talking about. So we'll go to this shot here because it's quite a pleasant shot. We'll go to voice mode, uh, we'll... We'll play a couple of voices. So here's patch one. And you can hear the effects are quite lush in here. Uh, There's a really interesting mode in this which is called paraphonic slur. So we can play polyphonic. But then we get this kind of almost 
almost like a monophonic top end. And that can have a sort of portamento feel between it. So it's quite a unique in, in sort of many ways that kind of adds this additional performative layer. Right, a few more sounds. This sounds a little bit like an FM sound. But it's not. It's a split. This one's quite nice. We're using the mod matrix, the mod wheel. To flip between uh, the, uh, the mask settings, which it kind of changes the harmonics, I think. Some delay in the re and the effects there. Let's have a look at this one. Polyphonic mono, which is kind of. Again, it's really curious. Key response, I've not come across this one. It's almost like when you do that thing with a, an envelope where unless you release the key quickly, you don't get the release. So in this one, we got... <laughs> Couple more things while I'm on it. Uh, we've got a DC input, we've got MIDI in and out, um, and then USB, which is for firmware. Sustain pedal input, headphone output, which I'm actually taking to the scope, which you can see, and just a pair of outputs. Before we get lost in uh, sounds, I think we should probably just take a look at the voice structure and then we can crack on with some more sounds and some more features. OK, um, we can either do init or we could just come back this way. Um, these are the program internal sort of read-only memories. And then we'll come back to this way to users. We'll go to, let's say, to 20 and this will give us just an init patch, which is a single oscillator. Now, there are two layers to the display. Uh, we've got, when we're in uh, this, when it's lit, we're in envelope mode, which adds envelopes for oscillators and filters. We're going to start the bass. Well, actually, we need to go there first, because what we want to do is set the level of the oscillator. We can take that up or down here. And incidentally, we can also then actually give it an envelope an amplitude envelope for each oscillator as well, and we can loop it, which is kind of cool. But I get ahead of myself, so so here we have oscillator, and again we can just set the semitone levels, goes right down to minus 60, which is a very wide range. It defaults to minus 24, which is an interesting. Then we've got fine tune. Start point. Now this is kind of interesting. because this seems to just sort of scale quickly through. So we do the speed. We can create some very interesting, almost intercalated sounds. Very curious that. So we'll just go back to starting. We'll go to naught. Uh, speed, and those are the parameters. That's for the two oscillators. Then we've got noise which if we again if we come to envelopes we'll turn down oscillator 1 turn down noise turn up noise and i think there's a oh this is yeah so in the noise we've got we can kind of this is very chip tunes isn't it anybody remember um Oh, God, what was that? Defender, I think it was, wasn't it? So it, there is a sort of a legacy of chiptune sounds in it. I think that's just sort of reducing the filtering and the bit depth of that noise source, because this is all pure DSP. <laughs> then we come into the filter. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll go back to envelope and turn down the level of noise, bring down the level of <laughs> oscillator one, then we can go to the filter. Again, come out of that mode. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> 
It's actually quite a nice sort of low pass mode. We get some resonance in there. It's obviously got some interpolation because even though it's only got 128 steps, it's actually sounds smoother than that. Uh, we've got different modes, so we've got low pass, high pass. Pass, notch filter, and we've got the tracking, we can do up to 100%. Uh, those are the, all the parameters for, let's just take this down, resonant, take it back. This is the thing that's a bit tedious, it's sort of coming back to a, oh that's my mode, so I want low. Now, it feels like, um, Aftertouch is sort of standard mapped to the low pass filter. I think, so if I, yeah. What's complicated about this is now I want to, let's say I want to kind of create a release for the oscillators. So I need to go into envelope mode. Then I'm just going to go sustain release. We've only got 15 steps. Seems a bit stingy actually, because you might want a bit more granularity to that. But then I could go into oscillator two and uh, let's take the level up, level up for that, and then we'll just, let's make this a sort of... Make that. So back to the envelope, level four. I can just go, okay, well let's just do no... So I can take the level back down, so it's, yeah. You can see, I can add that to the front of it. Same with the noise as well. I could do, take the level, maybe have a tiny little bit of just no sustain. In the noise, we can go back to the noise. Let's, let's go back to envelope. We sort of almost create, it's almost like creating partials, kind of each of those building blocks has its own envelope, which actually is kind of useful, because if you think about it, we could have a little but at the beginning, or we can have a slow increase. So, you know, say for instance, I might want to do, I might want in this oscillator, I might want to, uh, let's go to just 31, nice and easy, and then take that up, uh, like maybe a fifth. Why not take that up a fifth, seven, and then I can change, go back to here. Change the mask of that. Maybe even loop it. And then we could change the envelope of this, so. You see, it's just a, a slightly different take on how you would normally do this. And I suppose this is what takes you into different sonic worlds. I know I'm sort of, it's quite hard to demonstrate because there is no denying it is very push buttony and menu driven. But like I say, the results that you get are kind of in quite encouraging. You could get some love. So this, an interesting sound. Let's put this into one of the effects. Maybe uh, type, let's go for. And balance would be... You 
know, again, we're already kind of into, I would say, somewhat unusual sonic territories. I mean, it's nothing completely radical, but because of the route that you're forced to take, it kind of generates sounds which you may not be able to find. I suppose what I'm trying to say, in some ways, the limitations of the UI kind of force you to think about the way you program sounds, which leads you to some more unique and interesting patches. OK, so let's just try and demonstrate some more of the features uh, by demonstrating some patches, because, frankly, it's not much fun, probably, for me or for you to just be flipping through parameters on this tiny little display and trying to explain what the features are. And that is just one of the big downsides. If you're not a fan of this kind of parameter access and it really turns you off, then this is probably just going to wind you up. So, really, um, this may be not the synth for you. But if you're more curious and you want to see what kind of sound you can get out of this, then do watch on. And you can see that what I'm doing is I'm just changing the effects mix on the mod wheel. OK, I mean, it's no great, great big deal, but if we just go to this close up here, you can see what I've done. I'm in the effects button, go into the mod, and these are, again, really, you know, uh, uh, five character LCD speak. So we have the velocity destination. We have velocity amount, we have the mod wheel destination and the velocity amount. So what I'm doing is I'm going, I'm sending the mod wheel, which is admittedly hard to figure out, mod wheel destination to effects to balance. So that means now I can do... I can actually change the character of the sound quite radically. And the aftertouch is... ..also opening the filter. Quite a nice sound. So, so if we just look at the destinations here, uh, we could go to aftertouch destination, so that can be filter, LFO1, LFO2, volume, mask, frequency, oscillator, volume, oscillator, mask, oscillator 2, volume, oscillator 2, mask, um, volume, effects. So they're, they're not legion, but they add some additional possibilities. I mean, and I think this is one of the things that I'm finding. While it is capable of some great sound, you can't help but think, you'd want a bit more from a synth costing this much, if I'm perfectly honest. We'd want more matrix and more sort of destinations, a higher granularity to some of those parameters. Particularly in the effects, we want to be able to maybe tweak some of those algorithms. And I think, you know, I can't avoid this criticism, really, because, you know, prices of synths, two, a two grand synth can get you an awful lot of synth with a lot of hands-on control. This has got no real hands-on control apart from the performance. The keybed is nice, and those mappings are really nice, and it's quite playable, but there's not really much you can, you know, grab a knob and tweak, and that's, you know, for many people is going to be an issue. And while I understand the philosophy of their approach, I just think they went a little bit too far, and with that small display and the con continual parameter access required, it just made it a little more fiddly than perhaps it needs to be. OK, so we've got a sound here, which is... Sort of synthy. Now let's just take a look at the split. So if we want to split this, we press the split point. Now the split point is set to here because that's where I set it. But I could, if I just press and hold, I can set it up a bit higher. That's pretty straightforward. And then changing to do the split. Uh, we come back. We can just choose the second program, the other side of the split. It looks like they actually... Let's try that. And then the other parameters are we can detune it, we can set the balance, we can set the pan. That's pretty much it. But it's it's basic, and they share the effects of the first 
uh, program that you selected. And that's going to be the same in layer mode as well. So, you know, basic, but it's nice to have. And there are a few nice examples in here as well. Let's get on to a few more voices, shall we? This again is using that lovely... If we go into general, the mode is Parasleur, yeah, this Parasleur mode is really nice. It's got, for some people playing a, a, a paraphonic synth has, it's it's got a really nice sense, you know. So this is using the Parasleur. If you play all the notes at the same time, but then if you pick out individual notes, like a paraphonic or a monophonic line as part of the chord. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's a really pleasant thing to play, and it's not something that I've seen before. It's, I think it's quite a unique concept and I like it. That's all I wanted to say, really. So, uh, let's try another voice. Just look at the low end on this. I mean, it's, it's not lacking in... guessing this has got a little bit of, yeah, chorus two in it. Again, we can't adjust any of the uh, parameters in any of these effects, but they do seem kind of quite nicely chosen. And what happens if we change the balance of that? This is the arpeggiator, which is applied to only the left-hand side. That's nice. Uh, para the ARP, let's just have a look, see what we've got. We've got uh, trigger, trigger mode, yes, no, hold, speed, type, pong to, random. I think, have I got... So a few, I mean, some, with those effects, they really do come across nicely. I can't put my finger on it, but it's it's definitely... Oh, sounds like we've got some noise in there. Interesting. I can't put my finger on it, but it's got a certain something about it. There's this sort of width. I think it's partly to do with the effects and partly to do with the unusual sound sauce. This, this whole sort of bit masking uh, um, technology, which just provides quite a unique sound source. And remember that, that there's plenty of thunder and weight and also lots of sparkle to those wave shapes as well. So, you know, you get quite a lot. This is using some derive, I'm guessing. So that's 
distortion. This is all digital, it's actually still quite... And again, I have to say, the feel of the aftertouch on the keyboard has got a nice gradual cadence to it. I mean, you can adjust these in global, but I've been noticing a lot of keyboards with aftertouch at the moment are really switchy, you know, they're a bit sudden, whereas this has got a nice... They haven't skimped on the keyboard action on this at all. Try another patch. Yeah, you can name these patches, should you wish. Uh, honestly, I'm not really going to bother. Uh, and you can store them in any of the 399, well, 400 patches. So these, the P ones, are essentially ones you can't touch. They come with the unit. This is nice. After touch bringing in that noise. Just a good old solid bass sound. Let's get some effects on that. It does sound like um, some of these presets have tempo sync, which is handy because we can't edit any others. That, but that's a nice. That's nice, isn't it? Kind of organy. I must say, I like the patch design in this. They haven't gone for sort of trying to emulate lots of um, other synths. As it's got every every patch in it seems to have its own sort of sly angle on whatever it's trying to emulate, which I I do appreciate. <laughs> These are not. See how high. Let's see what the. I think that's me probably playing the sequence. We can record stuff into the sequencer as well, of course. But it's really quite a basic uh, scenario. I'm not going to go there. I'm guessing one of these... No, interesting. So what's the tuning on these, perhaps? Let's see what the... Ah, yeah, two, two apart. Curious sounds. Mm -hmm. 
OK, well, it's an interesting synthesizer, the mask. I must admit, I, I, when I first started looking at it, I was a bit... I wasn't really kind of feeling it. But then as I got into it and started creating a few of my own sounds and exploring the ones that are on board, I was really hearing something quite unusual and unique. And I'm guessing that's what they're going for. Obviously, in this case, with such a small manufacturer uh, and a small team, that does come at a cost. You know, you're supporting kind of a small company who are doing a boutique run, effectively. I don't know how many of these will be will be made, uh, but it definitely has a unique sonic imprint. And if that's something that is important to you, then it's definitely worth, worth, worth checking out. But it's, I would say it's somewhat of a luxury. For those of you who maybe get a bit frustrated with uh, limited parameter access, small character displays, and sort of quite an underdeveloped UI, then this is probably not for you. You can MIDI control some of these parameters, but to be honest, I would like to have a set of macros or something on here that we could just easily assign. But anything that you'd add to the OS is going to cause problems here, because ultimately, with a five-character LED, there's really very little you could do. Just just writing the OS to be able to access that stuff is going to be really hard because they've kind of limited themselves with the amount of information you can display on there. So I do question some of the ideas into the UI. I like the way it looks, I like the way it sounds, I like the way it plays, but I think you have to be very keen on what this has to offer to be able to uh, take the plunge. Having said that, I think if you do, you're going to end up with some interesting sounds, that's for sure. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That was the Kodamo Mask 1 Bitmask Synthesizer. I'll put a little bit extra playing and exploration on our Patreon. Be sure to check that out. Details below. That's it for now. See you next time.